Panic in the RV, a story I have never shared before, but I'm about to do it right now. Stand by. Hey there, how are you? Dr. Dave, I am the RV Dummy. I'm going to be sharing a story that honestly I have never shared before in any type of a public forum. Um, it's a really serious and interesting story that I think can help many of my fellow RV friends. Um, it encompasses, it takes place over a long period of time. So I'm going to, I'm not scripted. I don't have a teleprompter. I'm going to be speaking from my heart. I might be jumping around a little bit, but I, I need to share this super important story with you. So let's get started right now. This goes back. It starts maybe roughly three to four years ago. Um, I'm the type, um, I've always been very healthy and um, I go see my doctor um, every year. Um, for a physical and usually things turn out really well. I've never been on any medications, but about, um, yeah, about three or four years ago, I was seeing my doc, um, actually not the one in Salt Lake City, but before I moved and, um, she, she's been noticing some slightly, nothing serious, but slightly elevated blood pressure sometimes. And I think they noticed something maybe on an EKG. And also the fact that sometimes I told her um, I, I, I'm tired during the day. Sometimes I need to take some naps. And she immediately said she wanted to get me tested for something called sleep apnea. Now, many of you have heard of sleep apnea. Some of you may not have. Um, another word for it, is not one type of sleep apnea is obstructive sleep apnea. That seems to be the most common. And what she told me is there's a very good chance that some of these things I'm experiencing could be a result of having sleep apnea, which by the way, sleep apnea just real simply and loosely defined is a, an issue, a medical issue, that when you're sleeping at night, your airway, to put it very, very simply, your airway closes off due to maybe gravity forcing your tongue or your soft palate to block your airway, and you don't breathe properly. Either you breathe improperly or you can close your airway totally off, um, and that's actually called an apnea, where you start like. Uh, gasping and choking and then wake up and wondering what's going on. And also snoring can accompany this. So I actually, back in Maryland, I had a friend of mine um, who's a dentist who kind of specialized in treating sleep apnea. And I w called him up and um, he did it. We did a home sleep study. They, they put, they wire all this stuff all over you for like one or two nights straight and you got to sleep with it and it's difficult. But when the results came back, he said, Dave, you've got um, mild obstructive sleep apnea. So it's not that bad, but I can treat you. And I was all excited. He said the treatment's going to be pretty easy. He actually took impressions and did a lot of measurements and did all kinds of things. And he finally made me this appliance. It's a, um, a sleep apnea um, oral appliance. And I've actually got it right in front of me here. I'll show you what it looks like. And the idea behind this thing is that it's two pieces. The idea behind it is that when you wear this at night, it repositions, repositions your jaw. So when you're sleeping, it keeps your airway open as opposed to your jaw kind of dropping and soft tissue getting in the way and closing off and you can't breathe. So the top piece kind of goes on just like this. And the bottom piece goes on like that. And it moves your jaw forward. So when your jaw forward, it opens your airway. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, that's so. Okay, let me take this out. One second. Uh, uh, uh. And by the way, it's not, it's not, it's not easy to sleep with this the first couple of weeks. It takes a lot of getting used to. But then, after I got used to it, after I got used to it, it was easy. So, my wife immediately told me that any storing that I had been doing um, totally went away. And sometimes in the middle of the night when I would like like wake up and gasp for air, like <laughs> gasp for air, that totally went away. So life was good. My sleep apnea, as long as I wore this appliance, was treated and under control. Or so I thought. Fast forward a little bit of time. I noticed that I just started having some really weird things going on with my body. Number one was 
sometimes I just felt like anxious. I had anxiety issues and my life is really good. And I'm not saying this to be weird in any way, but I, I just didn't really have any like financial issues or marital issues. Everything in my life seemed to be going well. And so if any, I told anybody that I was anxious or had anxiety, they'd say, well, Dave, why are you anxious? And I'd say, I, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, I noticed that my blood pressure sometimes, I took it at home a lot. It would be creeping up a little bit more. And to relate this back to the RV, oftentimes if we were taking an RV trip, I'd be at the wheel of the RV and I'd start to, I'd start to be getting really anxious. And I don't know why, I'm pretty comfortable driving an RV, but um, I would start to get almost like, almost like palpitations. Um, and I don't know if you call it like an anxiety attack. Um, my ch chest would start to feel really weird. And I had to do all kind of weird things to try to calm myself down. That's just not normal. Not only that, I started feeling super, super tired sometimes. Not every day, but sometimes I went through these spells that like, I, it would be difficult for me to even get through the day because I was just so tired. And this went on and I thought, maybe it's just that I'm getting older and these are normal things that happen as you get older. Um, but they didn't really go away. They didn't go away on their own. Um, so we moved to Salt Lake City about, right now it's been about a year and a half or so, something like that. And my goal was once we moved to Salt Lake City was to really get my health back in order. Whatever was going on, I needed to find out what it was, clear it up. So the anxiety seemed to be getting worse and worse and worse. And it got to the point where I couldn't sleep well at night because I wake up in the middle of the night and it felt like my heart was pounding. And I had this level, like kind of this level of anxiety that just would never go away. It was like, is with me 24 seven. This wasn't right. And again, I had nothing that I knew of to be anxious about. My blood pressure was creeping up more. It was really weird. I'm an athlete. I'm always outside walking, running, skiing, doing things outside. Why would my blood pressure creep up? I'm thin. Um, I, I, uh, I, 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 I couldn't figure any of this stuff out. So one of the first things I did when I got to Salt Lake City is I sought the advice, the care of a psychiatrist because I'm thinking, okay, Maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe I need, maybe I've got this horrible anxiety disorder and I need to be medicated or something. So I went to see him and he, he did, we did talk for quite a while. And he, one of the first things he did was he put me on some types of anti-anxiety medication. Now, at first it seemed fine. It started to work. I felt a little bit better, but there's still always an underlying reason why you're anxious. The anti-anxiety medication can mask it and make you feel better, but there's always a reason why somebody's anxious. I still noticed my blood pressure wasn't really getting any better. So I sought the care of a brand new physician in Salt Lake City as well. I started telling her what was going on. And um, one of the first things she said to me is, have you ever been evaluated for sleep apnea? And I said, yes, as a matter of fact, I, I, I've been treated. I've, I'm wearing this appliance and here it is right here. And I still remember this. The very first thing she said to me was, David, you have sleep apnea. Why aren't you wearing a CPAP? Why, don't you, why aren't you using a CPAP? And I said, well, my dentist friend told me I didn't need one and this is great care. And she said, no, no. The C if you have sleep apnea, the CPAP is the first line of defense, the gold standard in treating obstructive sleep apnea. Now, I went on to find out after a lot of research and reading and talking to doctors and, and um, listening to podcasts and, and immersing myself in this world of sleep apnea that a lot of my symptoms, a lot of the issues I was having could be could be directly related to obstructive sleep apnea. Driving, feeling anxious when driving, having some brain fog, feeling uncomfortable driving in the evening. Sometimes we'd be up um, in Park City and for, if you're not around this area to get back from Park City to Salt Lake City, you've got to drive 
through an in, down an interstate highway, but it's all the way down through a canyon. And towards the end, it starts winding and winding. And I felt I started feeling very uncomfortable and anxious and sometimes dizzy and not confident even driving back from Park City. It's a 20 to 30 minute drive through this canyon. I just started feeling like I couldn't handle it. Um, the driving in the RV was not getting any better. I would, I would have panic attacks. Um, again, I don't know if they were like true panic attacks, but I would start feeling very, very anxious and panicky. Um, my blood pressure was, was not getting any better. Uh, I just, and, and I, I found out that if left untreated or if not treated properly, obstructive sleep apnea can lead to some very, very, very serious consequences, not only anxiety, depression, um, high blood pressure, but it can lead to serious things, really serious things such as heart attacks, strokes, cancer. The list goes on and on and on because basically during obstructive sleep apnea, you are depriving your body, your tissues of oxygen. Is this a common thing in people? It's extremely common. In fact, more common than I ever thought, even though I used to be a practicing dentist, it's more common than I ever thought. And the scariest thing is that 80% of the human beings out there that actually have obstructive sleep apnea don't know it and they're undiagnosed and they've got little issues here and there and maybe they think it's not a big deal and they've got even things like... Um, chronic sinusitis, chronic um, congestion, post-nasal drip, all these things can directly be related. Oh, by the way, um, GERD, you know, um, gastric esophageal reflex uh, disease or a disorder, or whatever, I'm not sure of it, but it's GERD. Um, when you have, you know, acid that comes up from your stomach contents, I used to get that. If you've got anything like that, and again, I'm speaking to you guys because let's face it, a lot of my RV friends who are watching this video right now, where a lot of us are in the same age category, um, it's probably a little bit more prevalent in males, but not that much more prevalent. And also the old um, thought process that um, in order to have sleep apnea, you've got to be way overweight, obese, with big you know, fat tissues that are obstruct. No, that's not true. I mean, look, I'm not obese. I've got it. So it does not, it does not discriminate. Anybody, even, even children can have obstructive sleep apnea. And, and my guess is going back to my childhood now, knowing what I know about me, my personality, my anxiety, my um, esophageal reflux that I used to have, I don't have it anymore because it's, it's we took care of that, but all these things also, and, and even like, um, a cough, a post nasal drip, all of these things seem to possibly very, actually probably link back to obstructive sleep apnea. Now, um, I don't think I said this yet in today's video, but uh, when my doc asked me why I'm not using a CPAP, she said, we got to get you another sleep test. So I went and had a sleep test here in Salt Lake City. They did the same thing. They did it. It was a take home. It was at home sleep test. I did it in my own bedroom, my own bed. I'm hooked up to all this stuff. And a week or two later, I get the results back that I do not anymore. I do. I no longer have mild obstructive sleep apnea guess what? It's now in the moderate category, which is much worse, which my doctor said absolutely, absolutely could explain all of these weird things I had going on in my life. I mean, driving, and I'm sitting right here in our RV, driving got to be, it was, it was, it got to be very difficult for me. I had Yoko driving more often because I just didn't feel good about it. We went through the sleep test. She prescribed the first line of defense in treating obstructive sleep apnea, which is a CPAP. Now, in case you're not familiar with the CPAP, CPAP stands for, I hope I get this exactly right, but continual positive air pressure or continuous positive air pressure. You, you wear, it's a little machine, you plug it in, you wear a mask either over your entire face, which would be your nose and your mouth, or they've got them that you just can wear over your mouth and it touches your nose or in your nose only. So I was instructed 
I got this, I picked up this machine. They, because of the pandemic, they really couldn't give one-on-one -on -one, um, education or, or instruction. So they pretty much gave me this. They said, go and watch YouTube, go on a video and figure out how to do this thing. I was kind of on my own, I hate to say. Um, and the first night, the second night, the third night, uh, I was uncomfortable. I couldn't sleep with it. The mask was terribly, terribly just um, not fun to wear and it couldn't breathe right and pressure was coming at you. It was really, really, really crazy. However, I, as I said earlier, I immersed myself in this world, in this world that I really didn't know much about, in this world of obstructive sleep apnea, OSA. I started getting in tune with a lot of the experts, meaning listen to their podcasts, reading their books, and it is absolutely fascinating. And I am convinced that so many of my friends watching this right now, so many of my RV friends have some form of obstructive sleep apnea that's manifesting other physical conditions, such as high blood pressure, anxiety, depression, um, chronic fatigue, some fatigue, um, uh, sinusitis, nasal congestion, acid reflux, all these things, I'm promising you there's a very good chance if you have some of these things going on, there's a very good chance you may have obstructive sleep apnea. And I am going to strongly suggest you hook up with a sleep doctor. You can go through your primary care physician at first, um, let them know that you saw my video and let them know you're concerned about obstructive sleep apnea. It, and you can do some research on it on your own. It is very, very prevalent. Again, especially in our age category, RVers. Most of us are, again, a lot of us, not most of us, a lot of us are in the same age category. This is a very, very, very serious medical issue. If left unchecked, can lead to some very serious consequences, which could lead to, I hate to say it, could lead to death. Now, we're all going to die. Everything leads to death, but we don't want to go before our time. I still feel great. I feel vibrant. I've been using the CPAP now for about closing in on two months. And again, I will be happy to admit it's been a crazy, crazy, crazy learning curve but I've got myself associated with a few forums online. We all help each other out. And through a lot of coaching and um, immersing myself in this culture, I've learned so much about it. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to, the most important takeaway from this video today is if you have anything that I just mentioned, anything at all, including snoring, or if your bed partner says you sometimes gasp for air in the middle of the night, I strongly suggest you look into it further because there could be underlying issues that are kind of laying there dormant that you don't even know about, but it's causing a inflammation and a real problem in your body. There's a very good chance this is happening to you. I hate to say it, but there's a good chance. Now, um, I'm going to do a part two video. It's going to come, it's going to be my very next video. And I'm going to show you exactly what my CPAP looks like, how I use it, how it's changed my life. Not only changed my life, but I feel at this point, I'm going to say it, it possibly could have been, it could be saving my life. I feel very confident with that. I'm going to show you what it looks like, how I use it. And not only that, how I use it when we're in the RV here camping, especially if we're in an area that maybe we're boondocking, um, there's no hookups, there's no electricity, um, what do you do? Right now, I can honestly say to you, I am never gonna skip a night. Because I know if I skip a night um, and I have sleep apnea, my blood oxygen level is gonna go way down. It's extremely dangerous. And yeah, you could die from it. So um, this has been part one. It was, what did I, what did I label it? What, what did I call this video? Panic in the RV, panic in the RV, part one. Um, we're going to do part two really soon. I suggest, I'm going to make it a playlist. I'm going to suggest, highly suggest you tune in. I'll show you exactly, exactly what the CPAP is all about. It's not as intimidating as you may think. I actually have learned to love it. And right now I would never even dream, no pun intended. I would never dream of going to sleep without my CPAP. And as far as this appliance, I'm saving it for prosperity, but I just don't think 
it did anything for me. Or if it did something, it did stop any noises like snoring or gasping. It stopped that. But basically, it did not really treat my obstructive sleep apnea on the level that it should have been treated. And that's why the CPAP comes in. Next time, I'm going to show you everything there is to know about it. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, feel free to comment, like my video if you like this. I know I went kind of long today, but this is super, super, super important. I kind of spilled my guts, spilled the beans, because a lot of people in the past have looked at me as like, kind of like the epitome of health. Oh, Dr. Dave, that guy is so healthy. He's always out there doing something. But even though it appeared to be that way, I was really, really ill on the inside. And it took all these crazy symptoms to really surface in a big way before I really started seeking help. So again, how many of you have little symptoms here and there that are not that bad? I will say that there could be things going on under the surface that you don't even know about that you need to get checked out. Um, that's all I'll say today. Please check in part two. I'll do it as soon as I possibly can. You're going to want to see it. It's a not to be missed. Till next time. By the way, if you have anything, check with your doc. Get the sleep test, the sleep study. It can save your life, I promise you. Till next time, Dr. Dave, the RV dummy. And sometimes they call me CPAP man. See you later.